Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna go over everything that you should be looking at when purchasing a wireless system. This will be for singers or guitarists, basses, violin instruments, or even speeches or for speaking and things like that. So I actually bought my first wireless system for guitar about seven years ago, and it kind of turned into an obsession. And yes, this is really all my wireless. And I even forgot to put a few of them in here. And yeah, it's turned into a bit of an obsession. I love playing wireless, even if I'm playing like acoustic sets where I don't move around a lot. I still have a wireless vocal mic and a wireless guitar and a wireless in your monitor system just because I'm I love not being tethered and I love being able to move around and I hate stepping on cables. So yeah, I'm a little obsessed with wireless. So I'm putting together this video of everything you should be looking at when purchasing a wireless system, whether it's going to be a handheld mic, which are the most common, or even the headset, also known as the Britney mics or the lavalier clip on mics for speaking. You'll see the clip on mics for like weddings and stuff. Stuff like that or it also applies to anyone you know playing an instrument guitar bass violin anything that accepts a quarter inch input so this video will also apply to people who are touring or playing at local venues around town or if you're planning on keeping a wireless at one venue as a house system this video will apply to all of you so we're going to go over the different things that you should be looking for a couple of things about setup how they work and i'll give you some recommendations of the ones that i personally recommend and as well as some bonus tips at the end I do post quite a bit about wireless gear on my YouTube channel, so don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Before we get started, I wanted to thank the sponsor of today's video, DistroKid. If you haven't heard of DistroKid, DistroKid is one of the best ways to release your music onto platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google, and all sorts of other digital platforms. It only costs you $20 a year and you keep all of your royalties, which is amazing. Most of the time with digital distribution services, they charge you per release, so you have to pay a certain amount for every single release and you pay that for every year. With DistroKid, it's just you pay $20 a year and you get unlimited uploads. And again, you keep all of your royalties. DistroKid does not take a cut of any of your royalties, which is also pretty rare from digital distribution services. So check out the link in the description down below to get 7% off your first yearly membership. So go to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Scott Ewell Music, S-C-O-T-T-U-H-L Music to get that 7% discount link or follow the link in the description down below. Again, using that link will save you 7% of your first year. All right, back to the video. Okay, so right off the bat, I'm not going to do some of the obvious stuff like get one that sounds good, get one that's in your budget. I mean, you should know that. And the thing about tone is that everyone, you know, has their own opinion about tones. Like, for example, this is the Beta 87. I love the sound of this mic. It's one of my favorite mics to use live. Some people don't like the sound of it. So, you know, get a good quality one, one that's built well, and one that's in your price budget. Most of this video is going to be focused on some of the specs and the things you need to look for in the specs before you buy a wireless. So to start, I'm going to go over the setup and the things required for a wireless system. If you already know this, if you already know how to set up a wireless system and what's required for a wireless system, go ahead and skip to the spot on the screen because you don't need to go over this. So this is the SLX system by Sure. I'm going to use this for the demo because I do have the wireless microphone and the body pack for this system. And I'm assuming this is what most of you are going to be looking for in a wireless system, either a handheld or or this body pack, which can be used for instruments like guitar, bass, and violin and stuff like that. So every wireless system is going to have a transmitter and a receiver. A transmitter, in this case, is either the microphone or the body pack, which you attach to your instrument. And then this is the receiver. That's what's going to get the signal. And in the back, it has, this one has XLR or quarter inch out. So you're going to plug this into wherever you're trying to send the signal. So for vocalists, it'll go into the board or a stage snake or something like that for the front of house guy to mix. Or if you're using this with an instrument like a guitar or a bass, out of the back of the quarter inch is going to go into your amp or your first pedal board or into the mixer, possibly if you're going direct acoustic or anything like that. So instead of using a cable, your transmitter sends the signal to your receiver and your receiver goes into wherever you want the signal to go next, whether that's an amp, pedal board, or a mixer. And instead of sending audio through a cable, it sends it over radio waves. So the transmitter sends the signal wirelessly to the receiver. So in order to communicate with each other, they need to be set to the same frequency channel. So there are two common ways to see what channel your transmitter and your receiver are on. This is probably the most common. It'll give you two numbers. It'll give you a group and then a channel number. So in this case, it'll say group six, channel four or sometimes it'll actually display the frequency. This SLX, you can set it to either one, either the group and channel or the frequency. So for example, this is on 525.475 megahertz or group 
six, channel four, and I just need to set the transmitter and the receiver to both be on the same settings. But if you look on my mic right here, it is set to group six, channel four. So these are set to the same channel. So when I speak into it, you can see the audio right there. I'm speaking to the mic and it is picking up the signal. So if I wanted to change the channel, I'm gonna change it to channel six, eight. So now I'm talking into the mic right now. It's obviously not picking it up because it's not set to the same channel. But when I go here, can you see that? It might be hard to see. But now I have set it to six, eight. And now when I speak into it, you can see the audio meter right here is working. So again, you just have a transmitter and a receiver. You have to set them to the same channel. And again, you're either gonna see it like this where it actually displays the frequency that you're on, or most of the time you're gonna see a group and a channel and you have to set both of them to be the same. Make sense? So this is the most common setup is you have some sort of a receiver like this, which requires power, this is plugged in, and then it outputs wherever you're trying to send the signal. And then your transmitter is either a microphone or a body pack like this, which is used most of the time for instruments. Sometimes, however, you can have something like this. This is my Sennheiser system. This is my go-to system, actually, where this is the transmitter and then this is the receiver. So they look the same, but I would plug my guitar in here or my microphone if I'm doing like a clip-on or a Britney mic or something like that, and then output out of here into the board or the PA or my pedal board or whatever like that. They also have now, these are pretty common now, is these are some super simple plug and play wireless systems, mostly for instruments. You have a transmitter and receiver, this goes into your guitar or bass, this goes into your amp or first pedal, and it has a built-in battery with micro USB usually. I did a whole video on that actually, because these are generally mostly cheaper systems. So I'm not really gonna go over that in this video. I'm going to go over more of the other systems in this video. So if you are interested in checking that out, video out, link is in the description. As far as specs to look at, these are things that you're gonna to wanna to look for in a wireless microphone system. First of all, is the battery life. How long are your sets? Some of you are playing 30 minute sets with you know five bands on the bill. Some of you are using this for weddings, you know, so you need it to last all day for speeches and stuff like that, for like DJs or whatever. Some of you, like me, are playing four hour sets a night. So always make sure that you look at the battery life. Four or more hours is usually good. Most of them will get you, you know, six to eight hours. That's usually a sweet spot. If you're only, if you're playing, you know, four hours a night, I would say give yourself about an hour extra than what you need. That'll cover sound checks or overtime or anything like that. Next thing to look at is the range. So how far can your transmitter be away from the receiver and they still get signal? If you go outside of the range, it's gonna drop out. No wireless has infinite range. So every single wireless is gonna have a certain amount of feet that you can go away from the wireless before it starts to cut out. As part of your show, like you know, you leaving the stage and performing in the audience or something like that. Is this for, you know, weddings and you know, they have to pass the mic around the room for all the speeches and stuff like that. How much distance distance do you really need? Most wireless systems are going to give you about 100 feet, which is generally good. So my recommendation is if you're doing smaller gigs, 50 feet is enough, but I would give yourself a 100 foot range just to be safe. Because say that it's rated at 50 feet, you're not going to get 50 feet every single time at every single venue. It all depends on the wireless environment, the frequencies, which I'm going to get to here in a little bit, and stuff like that. So 50 feet is kind of, you know, the max that it's going to go. So I'd say give yourself double so that way, instead of having 50 feet and if you run into interference issues it starts chipping away at that and it drops down to 25 feet if you give yourself a hundred and it starts chipping away at that you'll always have about 50 feet of range that you can get out of your microphone system that's my personal recommendation if you're playing bigger events or corporate events or using it for speeches and weddings and stuff like that I would definitely get one that goes further at about probably around 200 feet or something like that because it's definitely more crucial that your mic doesn't cut out in those situations. So personal recommendation, 100 feet or more for hobby bar type gigs or smaller venues and 200 or more for more crucial bigger events, weddings, corporate events and bigger stages. Okay, the next thing to keep in mind that's really nice with the wireless system, it's not required, but it's definitely helpful. Does the wireless scan for the best system? And I'm gonna go more into detail about the frequencies and stuff like that in a second but can you just scan the environment for the best system? So this one, I can do auto channel select. And I push enter. And what it does, it's scanning 
and it found the best channel to transmit on. In this case, it found group six, channel 12. So it scanned the environment for the best signal. Now, what I can do also is instead of having to manually set this to 612, in here, it actually has a sync feature. You push this button that says sync, I put it right next to this, because this is where the inf it syncs over infrared, and this is where the infrared port is on the SLX system. And you can see it set it to 612 like it needs to be on. So now these are speaking to each other. So being able to scan the environment is a huge plus for a wireless system. Some systems are not gonna have that feature. This is an old Sure system that I got basically for free, and it still works fine. I actually haven't had any problems with it the few times that I've used it, but this one does not have the ability to scan for a different channel. You can actually see right there, this one transmits on 585.700 megahertz. That is the only option that is available in this system. There's no way to scan. So if that channel is taken, then you're SOL and you can't use your wireless that night. So having the ability to scan is definitely nice, but again, it's up to you on if you need that feature or not. So the next thing that you wanna focus on for specs is probably the most important in my opinion, and this all deals with the frequency and the frequency range and how many wireless you can use at once. This could get a little bit technical and a little bit nerdy, but I'm gonna to try to keep it as absolutely basic to understand as possible. So first of all, you have to find out what frequencies are legal in your country. So for example, in the United States, the FCC bought off a bunch of frequencies from 600 megahertz and up. So if you had something that was in the 700 megahertz frequencies, you were no longer allowed to use that system. So right now, like in the US, here's a handy chart showing what is available and what is not available. But anything between 470 and about 600 is currently legal. There also are some frequencies in the 900s and the 100s that you're allowed to use. And then there's ones like 2.4 gigahertz and 5.8 gigahertz, which are universally allowed. But I'll get into that a little bit later because 2.4 is the same frequency as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and stuff like that. So it's more congested and you have a more likely chance to get dropouts. So when you're looking at frequencies. Let's take a look. For example, we're going to look at the SLX. This is actually the digital model, so it's a little bit updated than the version that I have. But if you look here, you have the G58, the H55, and the J52. Those are the two options that they give you. They always give them some random names. But what you want to look at is right next to it where it says, so the G58, the frequency range or RF tuning bandwidth, sometimes as it's called, I told you to get a little nerdy, is 470 to 514 megahertz. Megahertz. So it can transmit in between those channels. The H55 is from 514 up to 558 megahertz. And then the J52 goes from 558 up to 602 megahertz. So each of these have about 44 megahertz of frequencies that they can transmit in between. So the more RF tuning bandwidth or the wider the range, the more options you have of frequencies to transmit on. The more options you have of frequencies you can transmit on, the less likely it is that you are going to run into interference. Because again, most of these systems you're going to be able to scan. So when you get to the venue and you scan, if you're only able to scan like, you know, within a 10 megahertz range, you don't have as many many options as you would get if you scanned with a system that has like, you know, 100 megahertz of range or RF tuning bandwidth. So now looking at the next model up from the SLX, the QLXD, we have the G50 frequency, which goes from 470 up to 534. Next one is 535 up to 598. And then you have this other one that's in the hundreds. But so let's compare it to the SLX, which goes from 470 to 514. This one goes from 470 to 534. So you have another 20 megahertz of frequencies that you can transmit on. And that means you are more likely to have have a clean channel the more frequencies that you have available. Just a little side note, if you remember from earlier, my SLX was actually set to 525.475. So it's not just 525, 526, 527. You have all those frequencies in the middle and it usually goes by 0.25, I believe. So you have all the frequencies in between the frequencies as well as options. And again, it just depends on your wireless system but most of them, especially the Shure and Sennheiser models have that. Okay, so now that you understand the RF tuning bandwidth, the next thing to keep in mind is just because you have, you know, 42 available frequencies or the 42 RF frequency bandwidth does not mean that you can have 42 of them running at once. 
So for example, we're gonna look at the PGX digital system by Sure. This is kind of their entry level one. So their tuning bandwidth, let's just look at this one, is from, the frequency range is from 902 to 928 megahertz. So that's 26 different frequencies that you can transmit on. However, using this chart that they give you, and it's nice that they give you this for basically all of their models, it says how many compatible systems can you use per band up to five. So just because you have 26 channels that you can that are available does not mean you can use 26 of those wireless all at once. So just be sure to always look that up. But also, this also depends on how many wireless you plan to use. So if it's just one wireless, you know, it's not the end of the world if you can only use up to five. Just keep in mind, again, you always want to give yourself a little bit of room because, you know, if you get a wireless, then your singer is going to get a wireless, your bassist is going to get a wireless. And that's how I ran into problems. The PGX worked great for me for a long time until we started doing, you know, three wireless instruments, two wireless mics. Mics. Uh, we actually had three wireless mics and then in-ear monitor systems. And then we started, you know, getting into problems because we can't use that many wireless all at once with the PGX system. So we had to upgrade. So if you look at something like, you know, the SLX system, you can use up to 12 of them per band. And then using this chart, you can, which is really nice about this, says compatible systems per band. So remember how the SLX had the G50 or whatever it was called, the G58. And then they had the H55 and stuff like that. So in each band, you're able to use up to 12, but using multiple bands, you're able to use up to, in this case, 42. Pretty helpful to have this chart and this information available to see how many you can use at once and how many you can use at once using multiple bands. Again, given the best possible wireless environment. Something else to keep in mind based, again, based on your budget is does the wireless system have external antennas? or something like this where the antenna is built into them. So I think the video is getting a little too long. I don't want to go into too much depth with this. External antennas are going to be better than ones like this one. This is the BLX system that has an internal antenna as opposed to the external antennas. The external ones are going to get you a better and more reliable signal. I will post something on the screen about antenna types and true diversity and stuff like that. If you really want to read about this, go ahead and pause the video and read more about it. But the video is getting really long, so I'll just simplify it and say, external antennas equals better. And we'll just stick with that. Okay, some other things to keep in mind that are nice about the systems. And you should ask yourself, do you need these? So first of all, does it have a battery indicator on the system? Mine on the SLX does. You can see it right there. You can see the battery indicator. So you can see that this one's full because it has three bars. This one, again, this is that really old system. It doesn't really have it. The indicator is that there's a low battery. Do you have a mute switch for turning it on and off really quick? So green means it's on. This orange color means that it's muted. So it's very easy to turn off and then turn back on. So if you're doing like speeches and stuff like that or weddings, it's nice to have a mute switch that's just super quick and now it's ready to go. One of my favorite things about my Sennheiser system, again, this is my this is my go-to Sennheiser system. One of my favorite things is this RF signal over here on the side. That is telling me what kind of a signal it is getting right now. So what I do is this is the receiver. This is the transmitter right here. The transmitter's off. If I am getting a signal when my transmitter is off, that means that frequency is already taken and I should scan for a different channel. So that is an incredibly useful feature about this system. Okay, now for some things that I personally do not care about, but I know some people are interested in this when you're looking for a wireless system. This personally doesn't bother me, but I'll, I'll include them just in case if this is something you need to look into. Analog versus digital. I personally have zero problems with either of them. Anything, you know, with tone, you're going to have millions of people arguing on Twitter about which is better. To me, they're both fine. This is a good description that I found online explaining the difference if you really care. I use quite a bit of digital stuff. Uh, and it's fine. I used to also use some analog stuff and it works fine as well. The, the argument of between the two, I think it's pretty pointless. A lot of the technology has gotten really good. It doesn't matter to me. The frequency range, and this is EQ frequency. It, a lot of people say that you have to have it between 20 hertz and 20 kilohertz because that's the full frequency spectrum. Sometimes, you know, just like 80 to 80 hertz up to 17 kilohertz or 15 kilohertz is fine. You don't really, especially for live, you never need really something lower or higher than that. Anyways, in my opinion. Some people for bass, yeah, it's important to have like that 50 and stuff like that. But in, again, that's something that's for you to look into. To me personally, most systems are going to give you that bass from at least 80 to about 15 kilohertz that, that you need. Okay, a, a couple of bonus thoughts and things to get. I 100% recommend rechargeable batteries all, and always keep a spare. The fact that these systems, most of these 
these systems use batteries, you're going to go through so many batteries. Trust me on this. When I first did it, you know, I, I was throwing out nine volts and tr double A's like, you know, every few days. The other thing about having rechargeables is that you can just go home, you can recharge it, you know how much is left in that system and your batteries don't die on stage. And then always have a backup with them. I'll post a link down below to what the systems that I recommend, the EBLs, the, the energizers and the Amazon basics, they all work really well. But I'll post links in the description of charging bays that I use, including double A's, triple A's and nine volt batteries. Another thing to get is a carrying case or a rack. If you're planning on carrying these around, it depends on your system. On your system, if you're getting a rack mounted one, or if you're getting one that's going to be Velcro to your pedal board. But keep in mind, getting a rack system will make it easier to carry around. So I'll post a link down in the description for below as well. So something to keep in mind before I give my recommendations of gear is: Are you a hobbyist or a professional? Is this something that you do, you know, on weekends? You know, you do one to three shows a month or something like that, or is this your full time job? If you're a hobbyist, I don't necessarily think you need to spend a thousand dollars or more on a wireless system if you have the money to spend on that and you really want a good system sure go for it so just keep it in mind you don't always have to go all out to get a good product so back when i was you know not doing this full time i was playing you know one to five shows a month you know i use the sure pdx system it worked great for me for those five years once i started adding more wireless systems in there and once it became my full-time job i needed to get uh, a system that was a lot more reliable and could handle multiple wireless going on at once. So therefore I upgraded. So just keep that in mind with my recommendations. Okay, so at the end, just for some of my recommendations on systems to get all of these will be in links in the description down below. And just letting you know, if you do decide to purchase these based on my recommendations, and you use the link in the description down below, it does help out my channel, it gives me a little bit of a kickback. And it doesn't cost you anything. The price is still the same it doesn't cost you anything more. It just helps out my channel a little bit. So I would appreciate that. But links are in the description down below for all of these. So my recommendations for hobby players, you know, if, it, if it's if you're just looking to do this as a hobby, the sure PGX or the BLX are both great systems. I used the PGX for years, and it worked great until I started adding a ton of wireless. And then it started having trouble competing with all of that. Um, if you do end up getting the BLX, I do recommend getting the one with the external tenant antennas, like I mentioned earlier, a runner up um, is the Phoenix Pro, I did do a video on this system, I believe this one does not work with active pickups. So just keep that in mind. But uh, check out the video I did about that. So for professional for microphones, I would recommend the Shure ULXD or the QLXD. I do use the SLX. The SLX is still a great system. I do wish that I spent just a little bit more for that QLX, which is the next level that gives you, you know, stronger antennas and stuff like that. To me, if you're if you're a pro, it's worth spending the extra money and just going up to the QLXD or the ULXD. Both of them are great. For instruments, the Sennheiser is my go to the EW300 or the EW either 100 or 500 series. The 500 is the one that I use. That is an awesome system. They do have a portable one like the one I use, which is amazing that you know, it's both of them are battery powered, they run off a double A, um, and I can bring them to whatever arrangement I need to. But they do also have the standard receiver ones as well. If you're just interested in using it that way, I do love the system. This is my go to wireless system that I use all the time. So that's basically it. There's no way I could go over every single possible thing that you need to know for a wireless system. But I think I cover the most important parts. If you made it to the end of this video and this did help you out, just do me a favor and hit the like button. It does a lot to help out my YouTube channel and recommend my channel and this video to other people. So I would appreciate that. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I do plan to do a video series of all the Sure wireless systems from the entry level all the way to the most advanced ones. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to get notified when those videos go live. Thank you again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out that link down below to get 7% off your first year when you release music with DistroKid. Thank you guys again for watching. Check out some of the other videos that I mentioned by clicking the links on the screen now. I do tons of videos about different wireless. Like I said, I'm pretty obsessed with them. So check those out if you're interested. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.